You are listening to the Daily Homily for Magdala in the Holy Land. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the customs post. He said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. While he was at table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat with Jesus and his disciples. The Pharisees saw this and said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? He heard this and said, those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. Go learn the meaning of the words, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There are so many beautiful treasures in the readings today. The story of Matthew has been the subject of even of great paintings. This famous one by Caravaggio that actually is a favorite painting of Pope Francis. Uh, where the, the drama of Jesus and Matthew's eyes encountering and the call reaching the depths of his heart and the effort to go forward. Some people are sending around today a clip from The Chosen about that moment of Jesus calling Matthew. And I think each of us can, would do well neither to follow Caravaggio or The Chosen, but just to go into that m- encounter. What did Matthew experience that allowed him to break loose from a lifestyle and a life context and become a wandering (laughs) companion of this wandering rabbi with people of different mentalities, no longer having the steady income of a tax collector, no longer having the bodyguard of a Roman centurion or one of the soldiers near him to protect him because he was an enemy of the people so perceived he was considered a sinner he was rejected by many many people would have seen him with disgust people you can feel when people find you disgusting they turn away from you they turn their back to you they go away sometimes that happens to a priest in europe uh, that you are rejected and maybe also in other places Uh, It's an an interesting experience to be rejected, uh, to be repudiated. And that had been surely Matthew's experience, but he had imposed himself because he had the backup of the Roman um, soldiers. Uh, He was in the pay of the Roman Empire, and that's one of the main reasons why he was frowned upon. And then the tax collector trade was also very prone to abuse because the power they had, they could always collect a bit more than was fair and keep it for themselves above and beyond what they needed to hand on uh, to the officials uh, along up the ranks. And so this was a a standard feature also, and there was wrongdoing in it. I'm not sure if Matthew had that. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he was more honest in his heart, and therefore also was more more ready to follow Jesus. But the fact is that he had a conversion, and conversion is a big word, but there are plenty of cases of it in the gospel story, and also up to our times. And it's the experience, one of the parts of the work of a priest is receiving people who have converted. And they come and they've changed their lifestyle. They want to finish an addiction. They want to finish and leave totally behind them rancor and hostility to others. They want to reconcile with others and with God. They want to be forgiven for their sins. And it's an extraordinary moment to be witness to that in any soul. It's a beautiful, beautiful Uh, transformation of the heart and mind and usually with that there's a relinquishing of pressures and tensions and the person sometimes just melts uh, in a sense of becoming free released deliverance where the powers of evil and the habits bad habits no longer have the decisive upper hand in one's life What was in the look between Jesus' eyes and Matthew's eyes? Because it wasn't just the voice. The voice also had a command, come, follow me. 
and Matthew was ready. So maybe there were some other earlier stages where Matthew was kind of eavesdropping in conversations. Uh, maybe he was hearing Jesus talking to people a few yards away in the town. Uh, maybe he had friends who were close to Jesus because Jesus was drawing people from this kind of questionable background. So the experience of Jesus was seeping to Matthew through other people, people between Matthew and Jesus. It wasn't just Matthew and Jesus direct in one moment, very probably. That could also happen. But usually there are people in between, like Andrew calls Peter to come and meet Jesus, and John probably calls his brother James, and Philip calls, uh, the Greeks come to Philip, and then Philip takes them to Andrew, and Andrew asks Jesus. There are people in between Jesus and every soul, because that's the way grace works, that's the way society works, that's the way creation works, and that's God just redeems creation. He doesn't throw out creation and do something new. And it's very beautiful to see that process in action. So we could really spend time contemplating Matthew and the incredible change he had, a very unlikely character to follow Jesus. And it surely must have made a big stir in all the people around him. And I've met people today, young people, and there's a big change in their lives. And within a year, there are friends that are uh, they're loosening, lo loosening up the moorings they have to so many material things, and they start also, a kind of a little earthquake happens under their feet when a friend changes a lifestyle to follow Jesus. Uh, it's, it's a whole different allegiance. Matthew was in great allegiance to the Romans. He was in allegiance to the Herodians because they were the local chiefs under the Romans. And now he had a new allegiance. He cut the ties from his old world and he's living a new life. And the beautiful thing about today's combination of readings is that we have this reading from the letter of the Ephesians chapter 4. And it would be good actually to read that whole chapter because but we have uh, two significant snippets of it. And if you think about the language that's in here combined with the circumstance of Paul, who was Saul, in a certain sense, like a Matthew, he had a huge turnaround in his life. And that's the meaning of the word conversion. It's a, a big U-turn. And he just goes the other direction. And he was persecuting the Christians, and now he himself is in jail, ready for execution ripe for execution because he's ready spiritually to go to Jesus. And he's going to explode in love at the moment of his martyrdom into eternal love forever. And he's encouraging the community to grow with all humility and gentleness and patience and bear with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity in the spirit. And he was chasing down Christians to kill them before. And he has had this huge change. How do we treat the ones that are far away? What do we think about them? Could, it, could we need a change in the way we see every human being, every politician, especially the ones we have on the worst category in our list? People in the church. It doesn't matter what side of the spectrum they're on, but they're a problem for us wherever I am. And so we judge people in society, in the family, in-laws, outlaws, everybody. And so let us uh, maybe ask for that grace today to look with the eyes of Jesus at everybody because we are placed between Jesus and other people who need Jesus. Thank you for joining us today. If you want to learn more about Magdala, follow us on YouTube and on Facebook.